This is an in-service training program presented by Nutrition Care Systems. Today's topic is cleaning and sanitizing. Today's learning objectives are number one, to understand the definition of the difference between clean and sanitary, discuss the various types of cleaning agents, describe the process of sanitizing, and understand basic dish machine operation and manual washing procedures. Let's start by talking about the definition of clean, which is the absence of visible dirt, debris, or grease. And it's also the actual physical removal of soil or food residue from surfaces of equipment and utensils. And also remember, non-food contact services must be kept free of dirt, debris, food residue, and dust. Since we just talked about the definition of clean, let's talk now about the definition of sanitary. So sanitary is the bacterial contamination is reduced to a safe level through the use of any kind of chemical sanitizing solution. And sanitizing is the reduction of bacteria that may cause disease. Also remember sanitizers have to be kept at an effective and safe level, which we'll talk about later on in this program, what those levels are. Let's talk briefly about the cleaning process in the kitchen. So cleaners have to have adequate pressure for a long time to penetrate the soil and to get rid of it or remove it. The role of a cleaner is to really loosen the soil from the surfaces of the object being cleaned and to keep that soil suspended so it doesn't return to the object that you just cleaned. And also in general, the higher the temperature of the water, the faster the chemical reactions and generally the more effective the cleaning action. There's different types of cleaners. can really be divided into three categories. And the first one would be detergents. And that includes soap and synthetic detergents. Make sure you read the label thoroughly as far as the use of this product. Don't ever substitute one detergent for another and never combine chemicals. That can be very hazardous. Second category is acid cleaners. And those are used to delime dish machines and remove water spots. And they can also be used to remove rust stains and tarnish. The third category we're going to talk about is abrasive cleaners. And many of us are familiar with, for example, Comet would be an abrasive cleaner. It contains a scarring agent or like the grit that helps release soil attached to a surface. They're effective in removing rust, grease, and heavy soil, but they can scratch stainless steel. So you want to make sure you don't use them on stainless steel. And use caution with abrasive cleaners as it scratches food contact surfaces, and that can then harbor bacterial growth. Let's talk about some sanitizing basics. Many people use chlorine or bleach in their facilities and you want to make sure you keep the concentration at 50 to 100 parts per million. Make sure it's immersed for at least a one minute. Uh, quats, a lot of people use those and that concentration needs to be 180 to 200 parts per million and again immersed for a minimum of one minute. Concentration of the sanitizing solution should be tested frequently and you're going to use a test strip kit similar to the one listed on this slide. You also want to make sure you change that sanitizing water if it starts to look dirty. Uh, if you're going to heat sanitize, for an Illinois, the water must be at least 170 degrees or above for at least 30 seconds. And the 2015 food code is actually 171 degrees. As far as dish machine operation, for a high temperature machine, the wash temperature should be generally about 150 to 160. Final rinse should be 180. Dishes must be air dried. Never use a towel to dry the dishes that cause contamination. For a chemical or low temperature machine, you're gonna to need to make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Generally, the wash temperature is above 120 degrees Fahrenheit and rinse above 140. And again, make sure the proper concentration of the sanitizing chemical is being used if you're using a chemical or low temperature machine. Also, you wanna make sure prior to washing that you soak the silverware. 
when racking, put the handles all the same way. If you're using cylinders, make sure you wash the eating ends up. Place glasses, cups, and bowls and racks made for them. You want to make sure you rinse off the food, soil, any paper, garbage, anything like that before racking dishes so that heavy food particles do not enter the wash tank. Make sure the strainers for the dish machine are in place and always make sure you rinse the dishes with overhead sprayer to remove any remaining food soil. Run the dishes through the machine and allow them to air dry. Again, do not use a towel to dry. Store the sanitized dishes and silverware with the handle and up to prevent contamination. Clean the dish machine, drain the filters, sanitize the outside of the dish machine after each use. Three compartments, sink, cleaning, and sanitizing. First step is to wash in the first sink, rinse in the second, and sanitize in the third. Hot water sanitizing for 30 seconds in 170 degree water. Immerse in the chemical sanitizer for at least one minute. Air dry all objects, store to prevent any kind of contamination, and then make sure your sanitizer is the proper concentration. Let's take a short quiz to see how much you remember about our in-service program on cleaning and sanitizing. Question number one, sanitizing is the blank of bacteria that causes disease. A, elimination, B, reduction, C, increase, or D, none of the above. So question number one, sanitizing is the B, reduction of bacteria that causes disease. So sanitizing reduces the bacteria to a safe level. Our second question is which of the following is not a cleaning agent? A detergent, B acid cleaner, C ammonia, or D abrasive cleaner? The answer to question number two, which of the following is not a cleaning agent? And of course that would be ammonia, that is not a cleaning agent. Question number three, the concentration of chlorine or bleach should be A, 180 to 200 parts per million, B, 200 to 250 parts per million, C, 20 to 40 parts per million, or D, 50 to 100 parts per million. Question number three, the concentration of chlorine or bleach should be and the answer is D, 50 to 100 parts per million. Remember, A, 180 to 200 was the quaternary. Question four is a true or false question. The water temperature for manual washing should be 170 degrees. This is the Illinois standard. The answer to question four is true. The water temperature for manual washing in Illinois is 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Last question is another true or false question. It is okay to use a towel to dry objects to speed up the drying process. And the answer of course to this question is false. You only want to air dry. You don't want to use a towel to dry things to speed up the process. Thank you for your participation in today's program. Our goal is for you to use this information in your daily work. We hope you are well served today and every day. If you would like more information about our in-service training programs or our dietitian consulting services, contact us at Nutrition Care Systems, 1275 Davis Road, Suite 121, Elgin, Illinois, or visit us on the web at nutritioncaresystems.com.